One of the first things we were able to do when we reinvented last year was combine both MediaVest and Spark. So globally, it now stands alone from Starcom, and it is now a true global brand that's in partnership with Spark out of Chicago and MediaVest out of New York. So what we've wound up doing is kind of creating something that's new and vital and a new approach, a new way that we want to go to the marketplace. You'll see more about it as we go through 2017. Great, great. And you have a lot of clients here. What do they want to get out of CES and what are some, or more generally, what are they looking to a media agency for? I think every client comes to CES with one main objective. Show me what the future is going to be. Tell me where I should be putting my energy. What's real? The problem with that is that CES very rarely deals in what's real. It deals in what's real for that vendor. So, you know, Curve Television's real. Refrigerators that talk to you is real and take pictures of their contents. But is it truly in the house today? We've been talking about a connected home for seven years. Every year for seven years, it's been about more connectivity in the home. So, so I think that vendor, I'm sorry, I think that uh, clients definitely come here to learn, to kind of understand, and they're looking to their agency partners to kind of weed out all the crap and zero in on what's truly something I've got to focus on in the short term and then also in the long term. So Ryan, one thing that people are looking at is television, and that's yeah. a huge, obviously a huge media. We have the upfronts coming. Uh, right down the block here, there's like all these new kinds of TV sets and yeah, and, and, and what are the opportunities? And then of course there's a lot of subscription viewing, but yet there's a lot of opportunities for brands. So tell us how you see the future of TV uh, for marketers. So a couple things on TV. Uh, first of all, television's not going anywhere. It's bigger, stronger, it's better than it's ever been. The content that it is driving and the, 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 the content pioneering or, or wild, wild west of content today is in fact building, I think, not only television, but it's also building a content it's king mentality, which is a good thing for us all. SVOD, uh, subscription video on demand, all, these types of services are going to grow and they're going to get bigger and bigger and bigger. We're going to wind up having to begin to think a little bit more strategically about what's truly legacy television, really what does that mean, since no legacy television is merely just television, and what is future viewership. The future of viewing is where our focus is. We're going to be focusing a lot of energy on how do we get that content? So what are the pipes? How's that kind of, how is it connected? And how does the marketer play? Biggest concern of an advertiser today is how, how do I not get cut out of that equation? Because in a fully subscription world, there's no room for advertising. No one's really gonna go there fully, except for those individuals who can afford to opt out. There will always be the fungible middle, and then there will always be that one end that the advertisers can always bring utility to. We'll always be able to, through advertising, to provide more and more content. So there's, television's a bad term. It's not really accurate. Even the network TV guys aren't just in network TV. I think it's contents and monitors, screens, we've been talking screens forever, um, but it's actually happening. Confluence is happening right now, convergence is happening right And addressability, now. where does that fit in? Well, addressability is a panacea. We all want to get to the point where it's addressable. Now, we have household addressability, and that's fine, but I still don't have it down to the individual. We have to get individual ID addressability. We have to get to the point where I actually know the difference between you and me. And I want to sell you certain things, and I want to avoid certain things with you because it's pointless. Same thing with me. That is where we find ultimate efficiencies. Part of our demographics and part of our audiences have to age out of the fear of being identified. When you look at the young viewer, the young audience today, they don't actually have that, and I don't want to call it privacy fear. They actually find their sharing of data and information makes their life better and it's more beneficial. There's a generational mindset happening here and it's going to take a cycle. 